It was a time of stark and sometimes startling contrasts in American life. World War I was over. Women got the right to vote. Fashion took a liberal turn. Alcohol was outlawed. Babe Ruth was king of the ballpark. Charles Lindbergh of the skies. Jazz filled the air and the airwaves. And just about everybody who could afford it went to the movies in the Roaring Twenties. Okay, with the second part of the chapter, we're going to look at how popular culture influenced the 1920s. We're going to see the changing role that women have in the United States, but we're also going to focus a little bit more on some of the social things that are going on in terms of um, mass media, the rate radios, movies, athletics, things like that. All right, here's the one objective that you need to get at the end of this section, and that's just be able to describe, you know, what was going on in the everyday in the everyday life of people in the 1920s. You know, what was the jobs like? What were the leisure time like? Things of that sort. All right, so here would be kind of a, a little start to the beginning of the 1920s. All right, two nicknames. All right, first one is the Roaring Twenties. Okay, and the other would be the Jazz Age. Obviously, if you ever heard jazz music playing, I'm going to show you a clip a little later on that kind of. You know, you can kind of get the feel or the sense of the 1920s, right? But Roaring Twenties, just like it sounds, right? It was a lot of fun. It was loud. It was people doing what they wanted to do. It was trying to, you know, escape from the horrors of World War I, right? And then this idea of, of having a carefree spirit, meaning you didn't have worries. Everybody had, you know, anyone that wanted jobs had jobs. People were buying lots of goods. Even if they couldn't afford it, they were using credit or installment buying. But just a, a, a really a carefree, fun... Um, fun period of time in the United States. Okay, now here's where we see some of the, the changes that women had, okay? Now, if you think back, you know, a hundred years, right, women were completely different than they were in the 1920s. Even if you just look, focus solely on the clothes that they wore. Women before wore long dresses, okay? Um, had, you know, uh, uh, you know, the long dresses, but then also the long sleeves, so not showing an awful lot of skin. The 1920s, that mindset is going to change, and it's partly due to, partially due to World War I, when they had to step up and go to work, okay, they realized that they had individual lives, and they could contribute, right, to the country on their own. They were more than just a mother and a wife, all right, so that economic prosperity of the time, right, was really going to help women, right, and they kind of went, some went to college, some got different jobs, all right, became teachers, nurses, social workers, things like that. All right, but it's really it all comes down to that economic prosperity. It impacted women as well. All right. Uh, now this is the key one, the key part of this particular section is the idea of flappers. Okay, it is a vocabulary word. Right, flappers were the new attitude when it came to women in the uh, in the United States. Now we know that they have the right to vote. We talked about that in the Progressive Era. Right? But the flapper, and there's a picture on the front of your, uh, your core packet as well, but you can see the short dresses, the short haircuts, okay? the, the stylish hats. Okay? Women became a little more outward and focused more on their appearance and becoming individuals and kind of um, you know, re rebelling or revolting against you know, that stigma of what women were supposed to be doing. Right, then here's just a kind of a couple, uh, quick little couple blurbs. Uh, you know, there's t obviously tons of people. While reading was still a favorite pastime of many Americans, movies were gaining in popularity. Audiences thrilled at the comedies of Charlie Chaplin, the sweeping romances of Rudolph Valentino, and the freewheeling flapper antics of Clara Bow. Movies were a reflection of society's attitudes, but more and more, styles and attitudes were being influenced by the cinema. In 1927, sound was introduced to the movies, and their popularity grew even further. The 1920s was also known as a golden age of sports. College football was at a peak in popularity, and professional football was rapidly catching on. Red Grange, a fullback from the University of Chicago, was called the Galloping Ghost for his speed and agility, running 3,637 yards between 1923 and 1925. His fans followed him closely when he joined the Chicago Bears in 1925, further increasing the popularity of professional football. The sporting event of the decade occurred in boxing, when undisputed heavyweight champion Jack Dempsey lost his title to Gene Tunney. Dempsey had held the championship for seven years prior to his defeat. 
Spectators who couldn't make the event, which took place in Philadelphia to commemorate the city's 150th anniversary, listened to it at home on their radio receivers. Women, too, participated in the golden age of sports. Gertrude Ederle became a national sensation when she swam the English Channel in the summer of 1926. She became the first woman to swim the channel, and she topped the record set by a male by two hours. But the greatest luminary of the golden age of sports emerged in baseball. George Herman Ruth, nicknamed Babe Ruth, began his career with the New York Yankees on January 3, 1920. During his first year, he hit 54 home runs. In 1923, Ruth had a 393 batting average and was named MVP of the American League. That same year, Yankee Stadium was opened in the Bronx. It was referred to as the house that Ruth built. With the assistance of the Sultan of Swant, the Yankees won six pennants and three World Series during the 20s. Well, in the 1920s, tons of individuals make an impact, and that's why we have our, our project going on, right? Which, reminders, do at the end of the end of the chapter, so don't don't be putting that off, right? But mass media. This is the way for people around the country to be connected, all right? Whether it's through movies and radio, obviously today we would include um, music and the internet, all right, as a way of changing American culture, defining it, uniting people, all right? And mass media is responsible for um, spreading popular culture. So the exploits of, of Babe Ruth down here or, you know, the music of Louis Armstrong. Popular culture is going to be able to spread those ideas all throughout the country, all right? It's not just focused to one specific area as it was before the 1920s, all right? And now we have the Scopes trial, all right? So 1925, a lot of you were doing the extra credit in the vocabulary and they were kind of confused, right? And I told you that, you know, the vocab or the extra credit dealt with all three sections, right? But the Scopes trial, right, this became a clash between the old values and the new values, right? Um, the old values were you know, uh, teaching fundamentalism in school, meaning a fundamentalism is the belief that um, every word of the Bible is literally true. So when you look at the book of Genesis, God created, you know, the seven days, created the world, the universe, things like that, right? But then new scientific theory got involved and the theory of evolution, right? That, that man evolved from animals over a course of millions of years. Okay, you can ask Mr. Johnson or Mrs. Weeball, any of your science teachers, and they'll kind of explain it. All right, uh, and there's a law in Tennessee that said you could not teach evolution in school, right? And you had a, a science teacher, John Scopes, who taught evolution because he believed in it, right? And then it became, a, you know, went all the way to the state Supreme Court, Right, and higher levels after that, and the whole the whole country was focused on this because the old way was to to teach what the Bible said, and the new way was to teach what science science was saying. So you kind of had that clash or controversy right over this new this new idea. And just a couple of the pictures here. This is Darwin. Okay, he came up with the theory of uh, initially started the the concept of evolution. All right, that natural selection that we evolve over time. Right, and then. You know, just kind of a couple pictures. Here's a political cartoon. Okay, they call it the Scopes Monkey Trial because you know, you know, the according to the theory of evolution, we evolved from from the ape. All right, so that's sometimes it's referred to as the Scopes Monkey Trial as well. All right, and then the final part is prohibition in the 1920s. Now, some people are doing Al Capone, all right, Elliot Ness, organized crime with the 18th Amendment, which we you know we're not going to spend too much time now because we did in the Progressive Era. Government felt that, and people across the country felt that, alcohol was one of the problems in the United States. And if we can outlaw or ban alcohol, right, we'd be able to eliminate that problem. And what they found is, is after they passed the 18th Amendment, it didn't stop people from wanting to have alcohol anymore. So organized crime, all right, the mob, the mafia, is going to, you know, come to the United States and take advantage of, you know, the the demand for alcohol in the United States and they're going to set up speakeasies and smuggle alcohol into the United States. So they end up repealing prohibition um, because they realized that it, it was not working. People were still getting their hands on alcohol. Okay, so it was repealed in 1933. It's the only amendment that had to have another amendment repeal it. 